Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, glad to have you with me. Remember, you can follow me everywhere at EW Erickson online uh, and you can text the word show to 33777, get links to the podcast on all the platforms, get the 24-7 live stream, and get the daily notes. If you subscribe to the daily notes, you literally get all the links plus some of the stuff I'm going to talk about in there, except this. I decided I need to do this. There's actually more important stuff to talk about, honestly, except the media insists we talk about this. And I, I'm i deeply frustrated with the American media on this particular story. A year ago today, a young man went into Atlanta area spas and began shooting the place up. Eight people, including six Asian women, were fatally shot. And the media has used that event as a jumping off point to discuss anti-Asian violence in the country. The problem is that that young man who murdered those people did not hate Asian women. In fact, he found them sexually satisfying was going to the spas to have sex and had uh, purportedly embraced Christ and struggled mightily with sin and particularly sexual addiction and it drove him to despair and he was using those places as outlets for sex and decided the only way that he could stop himself from committing that sin that he struggled with was go murder people. He clearly has issues. It had nothing to do with anti-Asian hate. If anything, he liked them too much. Yet the media wants to lecture us on anti-Asian hate. And notice when the stories come up that really show that it is more often than not younger black men who are doing the hating and the beatings and the abuse, the media turns a blind eye to those stories. They like the white on Asian violence stories to lecture us, but... You, you run into the black on Asian violence stories and they run away. There was that idiot professor out of the University of Colorado, Boulder, uh, who confronted with the stories that most of the violence against Asians in this country is from young black men. But wait a second. Actually, they're just expressing their own oppression at the hand of the crackers. And they're just lashing out at other minorities. And so they want to lecture us today about this. Uh, but you will recall in New York City, just last week, a, a, a an Asian woman was beat in the head over 100 times. Over 100 times. They wouldn't even show the video. It was so horrific. But he, if you read the story, you would have never known who the attacker was. We do not have a rise in anti-Asian hate in this com- in this country, except among young black men, more often than not. And even then, and this is really important that you understand, even then we don't have a rise in anti-Asian hate among young black men unless you're in New York or San Francisco. And even then, we don't have a rise in young black men committing anti-Asian hate unless they have mental health issues more often than not. Not in every case, but overwhelmingly so. This is like the the gun violence stories in this country where no one ever wants to talk about the mental health issues involved. And yet, almost to a person, with some exceptions, almost to a person, it is young black men with mental health issues who are doing this. And yet the media wants to wring their hands about anti-Asian violence and how in America today, there's all this violence against Asians. And and there's some, not as much as the media would have you believe. It certainly is a problem. But demographically, we know where the problem comes from, and the media doesn't want to talk about that. They want to talk about a young white guy who shot up a spa in Atlanta because he was a sex addict without actually mentioning that and never, ever, ever mentioning the fact that why was he going to a spa for sex 
How could this happen? The proliferation of Asian-themed massage parlors across this country that are fronts for human trafficking and prostitution is out of control. And nobody wants to talk about it because, you know, intersectionality, it's, it's we'd be hating on the Asians if we did that. And yet it's a problem in communities across the country, particularly according to the Justice Department, within 30 minutes of military installations around the country. But let's not go there, huh? Let's instead talk about just anti-Asian hate in general, and let's use the anniversary of an incident that had nothing to do with that to make the case for it. This is why no one trusts the media, and no one wants to give the media a fair hearing on stories like this, even when they're onto something, because they take an event that is completely unrelated and try to claim that it was. Now, I got that off my chest, and I want to talk about the actual big story. The president of Ukraine... Volodymyr Zelensky has addressed the United States Congress. He spoke uh, via Zoom to the Congress around 9 o'clock this morning. He encouraged Congress to help with the no-fly zone. That's not going to work. That's not going to happen. Uh, there will be no no-fly zone enacted by the Americans in Ukraine. A lot of people, it polls very well, unless you do, and kudos to CBS CBS News did this. Uh, are you in support of a no-fly zone over Ukraine? It polls that like 70% of Americans say yes. When you ask them, did you know that a, a no-fly zone would mean Americans would have to fight Russians? Do you still support it? It polls at like 25%. Here's the president of Ukraine. You got to keep in mind, though, that uh, he has an interpreter. Uh, he speaks Ukrainian to the Congress through an interpreter. Let's see here if I can rearrange all of this as he comes through now. And in the end, to sum it up. Today, today it's not enough to be the leader of the nation. Yeah, I don't want to play that audio. That audio is not good. Um, the audio just came through. So I will tell you what he said. Today, the Ukrainian people are defending not only Ukraine, we are fighting for the values of Europe and the world, sacrificing our lives, the, the name of the future. That's why today the American people are helping not just Ukraine, but Europe and the world to keep the planet alive, to keep justice in history. Now, I'm almost 45 years old. My gosh, I'm older than the president of Ukraine. Well, that's all right. He's Philip's height. Today, my age stopped when the hearts of more than 100 children are beating. I see no sense in life if it cannot stop the deaths. And this is my main issue as the leader of my people, great Ukrainians. And as the leader of my nation, I am addressing President Biden. You are the leader of the nation, of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. That was his message to the United States Congress. He said, Remember Pearl Harbor, terrible morning of December 7, 1941, when your sky was black from the planes attacking you. Just remember it. Remember September the 11th, a terrible day, when evil tried to turn your cities, independent territories, in battlefields, when innocent people were attacked, attacked from air, just like nobody else expected it. You could not stop it. Our country experienced the same. I have a dream. These words are known to each of you today, I can say. I have a need. I need to protect our sky. You need, I need your decision, your help, which means exactly the same. The same you feel when you hear the words, I have a dream. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Ukraine is grateful to the United States for its support, for everything your government and your people have done for us, for weapons, the ammunition, for training, for finances, for leadership in the free world, which helps us to pressure the aggressor economically. Uh, this is Kevin McCarthy, the House Minority Leader. I thought President Zelensky was very powerful, as many of you watched. He made the case very strongly. Um, when you think about what President Biden should do, I think there's a bipartisan movement right here. Provide them the mix. Provide them the planes where they can create a no-fly zone. Provide them the armament that they need to continue to fight a, a war that they did not create. That was Kevin McCarthy, the leader of the Republicans. Um, and 
Let's see. Uh, nobody else is really worth talking about, frankly. Um, now, we're not going to create the no-fly zone. There is questions as to whether or not we should give aircraft to Ukraine. Uh, he Yes, uh, Poland has MiGs they would like to give to Ukraine. There is actually a press report out overnight uh, that Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, wanted to allow Poland to give the planes to Ukraine. The Ukrainian pilots already fly MiGs. They would not have to train for them. Uh, Poland would give them their MiGs. But Joe Biden himself refused to do it. And in part, because the Pentagon convinced Joe Biden, Poland really just wanted to get rid of their planes so they could get newer planes from us. That's what the Pentagon apparently believed, according to press reports. The Pentagon convinced Joe Biden not to give the MiGs, not because it would escalate, but because they thought it was really just Poland wanted to get rid of planes. They didn't think the Poles were actually serious. The Poles are very serious. By the way, have you noticed, by the way, over the last year or two, there's been this hand-wringing in the American press. Oh, the Poles, they've gone nationalist. They've gone populist. This is bad. You've got the Poles over there willing to fight the Russians with the Ukrainians. They have a history with the, the, the Russians. And you've got these Eastern European countries willing to stand up with Ukraine. These are the countries that have a history with the Soviet Union. These are the countries that know what it was like to be under the thumb of the Soviets. And they are willing to help fight the Russians. We don't know what that was like. We've not lived behind the Iron Curtain, some of us. Some of the immigrants here in this country have, and they seem to be the ones most willing to help Ukraine. It doesn't mean we have to have a no-fly zone. We don't need a no-fly zone. We don't need to engage, but we can certainly send arms and ammunition. We can send money to Ukraine, and we could let the Poles give Ukraine the planes. Let the Ukrainians establish their own no-fly zone. We don't have to do it. We just have to give our permission. That's all That's all the, the polls want is some permission. And I think we should give it to them. I, I think in particular that uh, we, we genuinely have an obligation at this point to continue to help Ukraine, not because it's the goodness of our heart, but because it is in our military strategic interest to see the Russian military beaten up by Ukraine. And in the process, we're learning things such as the Russians have developed a new weapon we did not know about. Have you all heard about this? So the Russians are firing a type of rocket. And when they fire the rockets, if uh, anti-rocket technology is detected and radar signals are detected, another rocket goes off and this rocket does not actually blow up anything. This rocket jams the radar and sends false signals to confuse the tracking devices. We didn't know the Russians had made such weapon. We do now. We're gathering a lot of intelligence by seeing how the Russians are fighting this. And it turns out the Russians are a brute strength, brute force instrument of war, which is why unless they can come up with some sort of peace talks, it's going to get even worse out there. But there are some talks. Uh, the Ukrainian president has tweeted they'll never join NATO. That's something the Russians wanted to hear. The Russians would also like part of eastern Ukraine. They want a clear path down to Crimea. If the Ukrainians give that, they may have peace. The problem is they would be surrendering their territorial integrity, and the Ukrainians don't want to give up that territory. And Who can blame them? It's theirs. I sleep well at night under bowl and branch sheets. And I need to tell you, my family, we were customers before I started endorsing them. It's what I like to do. I like to be familiar with the product and like it. And I love the bowl and branch sheets. One of the reasons I love them is because they are super soft sheets. <laughs> I've got to say that word right. But they've got a little weight to them. So, so you feel somewhat more snuggled. Like I've got some... Uh, sheets I, that came with the new mattress, and they're so light. It's like there's nothing on top of you, and I can't sleep well with them because they're, I mean, it's just, and then they bunch up the, the man, the satiny soft feel of the Bull and Branch sheets, it makes a real big difference. Listen, 
you've got so many options out there right now. You could go to a department store. You have so many options, but there's no reason to because with Bowl and Branch, you get high quality sheets. They've got a great thread count. They're perfect. They've got plenty of color options. You sleep well under them because they're soft and they're durable and they've got a little bit of weight, the perfect amount of weight for a sheet. Now, I want you to go out there and order Bolin Branch sheets because they are comfortable. You got, I mean, they're environmentally friendly. They're built around sustainability, and you got quality that lasts. You know, a lot of the companies that advertise all the environmentally friendly stuff, their sheets don't last. I can tell you, my bowl and branch sheets have lasted a long time, and they get softer over time. Experience the best sheets you've ever felt at bowlandbranch.com. Get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at checkout. That's bowl and branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com. The promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. Hello there, it's Eric Erickson here. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Uh, the, well, yeah, the left-wing Huffington Post. It is left-wing. It's attacking Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker, the football great from the University of Georgia and the NFL, running for the Senate in Georgia. He says he's skeptical of evolution. At one point, science said man came from apes, did it not? If that is true, why are there still apes? Think about it, he said at Sugar Hill Church in Georgia. Now you're getting too smart for us, Herschel, said lead pastor Chuck Allen. Yep, that's right. Um, He doesn't believe in evolution. You should know. I'm a Christian. I believe the Bible is the literal and errant word of God. And the Bible says God created Adam and Eve. And I believe Adam and Eve were real people. And you know who else did? Jesus Christ. And who am I to argue with the God of all creation when he believed in Adam and Eve? It's not popular these days to say these things. Now, I believe we evolve over time. I do. I I do think over time we do. Uh, But I don't think we we evolved from some other species. I I don't. You can call me crazy, but, you know, that's what the Bible says, and I believe the Bible. So does Herschel Walker. What I find remarkable, whether you believe in this or not, whether you believe in, in the divine creation of humanity or evolution or whatever, What I find remarkable is that the people who are attacking Herschel Walker for not believing in evolution as explained by the evolutionists, these are the same people who were applauding giving a man an award as a woman of the year. The Health and Human Services Assistant Secretary, uh, what's his name, Uh, Rachel whatever, is a man who is transgender. And now says he's a woman, but he's a man biologically. And the very people who are attacking Herschel Walker over his views on evolution are defending giving a man a Woman of the Year award. Uh, Who is really the anti-science person here? Because there is way more evidence out there that the theory of evolution as presented by evolutionists probably isn't what they think it is uh, than there is any sort of scientific evidence that men can somehow become women. It's just fascinating to watch people attack Herschel Walker for being a Christian. And also, he's running in the state of Georgia against someone who is a reverend. I'm curious to hear if the reverend, Raphael Warnock, uh, is a full-blown evolutionist. I I would be interested to hear that, too. Notice they're not raising those questions. But uh, to attack Herschel Walker for believing the Bible, claiming he's anti-science, and then praising Uh, A man for getting an award for being a woman is a little bit nuts, and this is where the left is these days. Insult the Christians, but praise all the other anti-science people. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. Yeah, You're more than welcome to call in, 877-973-7425. I got a note, though, based on an, an email I got from a listener. This is the Eric Erickson show. This is not your show. I don't mean to be rude, y'all. I really don't. But 
I got a, I got an email from a listener who just says if, if I say that I'm going to take phone calls, I should take his phone call. And he couldn't get past the call screen. But, I mean, your job is, Rush Limbaugh, you say, the caller's job is to make the host look good. It's not to give you free airtime uh, for your for your grievances. And having filled in for Rush, I can assure you, uh, very few people ever got on his show who called in. And you're not going to get on the show if you're a crazy person or you want to talk about some wild topic that uh, is not even remotely comprehensible or is not anywhere anywhere near anything I want to talk about. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be rude about it. Just I, I'm I'm shocked by the number of people who occasionally will email and feel like they're entitled to get on the radio show. That you can, but you gotta get your own radio show first. All right. Now that was rather snotty. I admit it. Somebody's gonna send me a email. You offended me. It's like yesterday. So I mentioned I mentioned Baptist churches and, and, and congregationalist churches and mega churches and how some churches uh will set up uh congregations and, and elder systems to just affirm anything the pastor wants. And somebody got really upset with me that I was insulting Baptist churches. I was not insulting Baptist churches. If you listen closely, I made it very clear I didn't mean specifically Baptist churches. It's just more common in congregationalist churches of which Baptists are, but I grew up Baptist. I'm not gonna insult the Baptist church. Man, do people get nitpicky sometimes. Sometimes I do too. It's just I get the angry email, so you don't. Now I want to go off the beaten path. Nobody seems to be talking about this issue on radio. And I think particularly for people in conservative talk, this is probably one of the bigger issues out there. And literally nobody seems to be talking about it. We are on the verge of having half the nation go concealed carry or without uh, constitutional carry, rather. The Georgia State House has passed constitutional carry. Now, for those of you who don't understand what constitutional carry is, the media does a terrible job with this. Like, for example, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution asked a poll question. Do you think people should have to get a license to carry their gun in public? And overwhelmingly, people said yes, even Republicans. It was a terrible question to ask. It really was. And the pollster, I believe it was the University of Georgia pollster. And if you're listening over there, I think you should know, uh, while my respect for University of Georgia polling on candidates has gone up, it, it's actually trended. We have real world polling now that tracks. That was a terrible, terrible, terrible question. And I'm trying not to use profanity uh, to express my disgust with the question asked in the poll of should people have to have a license to carry a gun in public? The reason is because most people presume... When you ask a question like that, are, so are you just saying people should be able to go buy a gun without having to go through the check to get it? It was a terrible, terrible way to ask the question. If you want to get a, a better sampling, say people who lawfully purchase guns, including the requisite checks, should they have to get an additional license to be able to carry their gun in public? Because the presumption there of should you have to get a license to buy your gun, everybody goes through a check to get a gun. Everybody, if you've ever bought a gun, I know the left starts talking about these loopholes. Yes, occasionally, you know, you can buy a gun from a friend and you don't have to go through all the background checks. But this this gun show loophole, I've bought guns at gun shows and I had to go through the background check. And there are all these, well, actually, I t yeah, the very few people are in that case. And by the way, uh, the guns that are used in crimes, overwhelmingly, they're stolen guns. They're not bought at gun shows. They're, they don't go through this. The, the left likes to make these stories up. If I go to a store and I get a gun, if I buy a gun, I have to fill out a form. And in filling out the form, I have to wait for the ATF to get back and say, yep, you can buy the gun. Sometimes it takes a while. In fact, I was given a gun a while back. I was given a gun by a manufacturer. In fact, I'll tell you who it was, True Precision up in Accra, Georgia. My gosh, those guys. Uh, you, you should get on like, true-precision.com. Just go check them out. If you're into guns, you need to check out True Precision. I love those guys. Man, my gun is amazing. You can't get my gun anymore. They don't do the camo pattern, but it was great. I had a camo pattern. Oh, it was gorgeous. But nonetheless, Glock 43X. But nonetheless, I had to wait. 
I, I still had to fill out all the paperwork to get the gun. They were giving it to me. They weren't selling it to me. They were giving it. I had to fill out all the paperwork. He had to wait. Georgia is on the verge of passing concealed carry, constitutional carry, and that means that you'll be able to carry your gun concealed in public without an additional license. For those of you who don't know, in some states, once you've lawfully purchased a gun, you filled out all the paperwork, the ATF has said, yes, this person is allowed to buy a gun, and you buy the gun. To then carry it outside of your house, you have to get an additional uh, fingerprint uh, and you got to get permission from local probate court. Some states make it very impossible to do. And then you get your concealed carry license and you can carry your gun in public as long as you have your concealed carry permit. Georgia's passing constitutional carry. The House and the Senate in Georgia have passed it. Uh, They passed slightly different versions. They have to be reconciled. It appears that they will. Alabama has just passed constitutional carry. Uh, Alabama became the 22nd state to allow people to carry concealed guns without a permit. The legislation was opposed uh, by the Sheriff's Association and others. Legislatures nationwide have been considering permitless carry. Uh, Georgia, Wisconsin, South Carolina, Indiana, Ohio, and Nebraska. The bills are advancing against a backdrop of a rise in gun violence and homicides that spiked in 2020. Ohio has now also signed legislation. Oh, Governor Mike DeWine on Monday signed Republican-backed legislation that would allow people to carry a concealed handgun without a permit or training and no longer require them to proactively tell law enforcement during traffic stops that they're armed. Now, this means that Alaska was the 22nd, uh, Alaska, Alabama was 22nd, Ohio's the 23rd, Georgia will be the 24th, and then Wisconsin, South Carolina, Indiana, and Nebraska are also looking at it. What a failure of the gun control movement in this country. What a failure of the gun control movement in this country. 23 states have now passed constitutional carry. Georgia will become the 24th. My friend Jerry Henry has just emailed me as I'm sitting here talking. Uh, He's with uh, the Georgia Second Amendment Organization, GA2A.org says that you'll be able to open or concealed carry in Georgia without a license. Texas has passed it. So Georgia will be the 24th state. Do you know what? That means over 100 million Americans will live in states with constitutional carry. Over 100 million Americans. South Carolina appears on the verge of, of doing it. That'll be half the state's. All of this has come with a disproportionate, overwhelming media focus on every town USA, gun violence, gun control organizations, making them saviors of America. But this comes not because the NRA has done anything, and this is very important here. The National Rifle Association is on the verge of bankruptcy. It's being sued to hell and back by various uh, entities, including the state of New York. It has become a sclerotic organization. It needs serious reform. The board of directors of the NRA doesn't realize how much reform it needs. They're siding with the status quo, which is less and less effective. There are other gun groups that are more effective, including Gun Owners of America, and then local groups like in states in Georgia, we've got uh, GA2A, the Georgia Second Amendment Group, far more effective in Georgia than the National Rifle Association. In fact, to some degree, The NRA has become sclerotic and somewhat corrupt and wasteful because it's been so successful. Look at the the larger conservative movement. As the larger conservative movement came to dominate American politics, what happened? The grift set in among a lot of them, and the organizations began to collapse. Why? Because they'd been so successful, they carried out their mission. If the Supreme Court of the United States 
overturns Roe versus Wade, I guarantee you within a decade, we're going to see pro-life groups turn to grift because they will have won and they will not wind down. Some of them will go on and focus more on, on broader issues. A lot of them, I think, over time will turn to grift. And I don't mean that pejoratively. It's just what happens when you're that successful. You have no purpose, but you can't wind down because the money's coming in. So you just turn to grift. But every town, I mean, Mike Bloomberg's been pouring money into it. These gun gun control groups, the media loves them. The media will put them on and never put a Second Amendment advocate on television with them. They just give them carte blanche to come on television and, and scare everyone about guns. And more than half the country is about to live in constitutional carry states. Why? Because the reality is different from the media and the reality is different from the left. A majority of Americans own guns. In fact, there are more guns in the hands of law-abiding private citizens than there are people in the United States. We're a nation of 330 million people and about 400 million guns. And it has come at a time, as every town USA and the others do, fear scenarios about gun violence. And the reality is people are buying guns because the very same people who want gun control are the same people who want to defund the police. And I hate to tell you this, I hate to tell you this, but if you own a gun, you are far more likely to be able to protect yourself and your family than if you call 911. When the burglar kicks in your door, when the home invader kicks in your door, they're not going to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'll wait, I'll wait. You just called 911, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. They're, they're not going to do that. They're, they're not going to wait when you call 911. Oh, wait, 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 let's give the police a head start. We're already in the house. No, if you have a gun, you're more likely to be able to kill the home invader than if you wait for the police to show up to find your corpse in your living room because the home invader didn't play by the rules. And when we live in a world of increasing crime and defund the police, the gun control hysterics and their nightmare scenarios don't play out very well. It is a fascinating thing that is not getting enough coverage. At a time of major crime wave, at a time of of major hysteria, at a time of the National American Press Corps going all in with gun control groups to scare Americans, CNN forums on, on school shootings and the like, it's the Second Amendment advocates who are winning. About half the country is about to live in states where you can carry a gun without having to get a special permit to do so. You still have to go through the the lawful process of buying a gun. You still have to go through the background check. All the people who say, I think it should be easier to vote than it is to buy a gun, have never bought a gun. Do you know you have to go register to vote? When you get your driver's license, they sign you up to vote. It's a pretty freaking easy process. Every single time you go buy a gun, you got to fill out the paperwork. You don't have to do that when you go vote. When you go vote, you just fill out, this is my name, here I am, I'm checking in, that's it. There's no background check, you don't have to wait. The people who say they want it to be as easy to vote as to buy a gun in this country have never bought a gun. And that's the problem, that's their problem. They haven't updated the talking points. We live in a nation where an overwhelming majority of Americans are now gun owners in large part because the police can't protect them and the left wants to defund the police. And so people have had to decide, I'm going to protect myself and my family. Let's go buy guns and learn how to use them. And it's real hard to tell those people that it's easier to buy a gun than it is to vote when they've gone through the process and the progressives who use the talking point have never done so. Second Amendment groups in this country at the local level are responsible, have built bipartisan relationships across party lines 
to advocate for the Second Amendment. It doesn't get a lot of media coverage, and it doesn't get a lot of coverage in conservative talk. And the reality is they're winning. They've won. More than half the country is about to be in constitutional carry states. Georgia should pass its this week, hopefully. Indiana, Nebraska, South Carolina are all on the verge. That'll put it with more than 25 states being constitutional carry. And you know what? There will still be crime and there will still be violence and there will still be media hysteria about all of the above tying it to the rise in gun ownership. And a majority of Americans will still realize the media is lying and the media and the gun control groups will continue to discredit themselves while you and I own guns and keep us and our families safe. I was so wound up about the guns. Jim was telling me I was supposed to tell you about Patriot Mobile, and I just totally forgot because I was on a roll. But speaking of the Second Amendment, you know one of the companies that's actually helped fund the Second Amendment cause across the country is Patriot Mobile. They actually give a portion of their profits to the Second Amendment cause around the country to help advance gun rights in the country, and they do it by getting you to be their customer. Then they take a portion of their profits and and flow it into the Second Amendment movement, the pro-life movement, all the causes you care about because they are run by conservatives. They were explicitly set up to help fund the conservative causes you care about. They are Christian, they're conservative, they're good people with great service. They use the same cell towers everyone else does. What you do is you go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric and you get free activation with my name. That's patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. You can also call them 972-PATRIOT. They've got 100% U.S.-based customer service. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation at Patriot Mobile and then they give you great discounts. If you're an NRA member, discount. Second Amendment, uh, first, first responder, veteran, discount, teacher, discount, great discounts. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. Now, we got other stuff. Interestingly enough, Americans, a majority of Americans, support Florida's uh, parental rights bill. Now, you know, the media has totally embraced the whole uh, calling the Florida legislation don't say gay, the the political education rights. But uh, according to Politico, not exactly friendly to conservatives, Politico, a majority of Americans support Florida's legislation that the left pejoratively calls the don't say gay bill. A majority of Americans do not believe that you need to teach sex to kindergartners, first, second, or third graders. And the Politico language in the poll actually shows that uh, 52% support limiting lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity. Uh, You know, uh, 52% actually say uh, limit it to age-appropriate discussions. And 51% support banning the teaching of sexual orientation and gender identity from kindergarten through third grade. Only 35% oppose it, by the way. The rest are undecided. An overwhelming majority of Republicans and a majority of independents support this. Now, interestingly enough, this is the second poll that shows majority support. The Daily Caller as well has run a poll. Not the Daily Caller, I'm sorry, the Daily Wire has run a a poll, shows the same thing. Overwhelming majority support. When do American majorities agree on anything? Well, they agree that you don't need to teach your kindergartner about sexual issues. And they're right. We shouldn't. We should pay attention to this. It's 2022. Things are still crazy. Things haven't settled down. And now you got the Federal Reserve and interest rates. You got the economy. You got inflation. A lot of banks won't even return your phone call. Let's say you're a small business and you need a loan for $750,000 or higher. You see an opportunity where banks, they don't even want to see you. You want to buy a building? You want to build a building? Reach out to the Frost family at First Liberty Building and Loan. They've been helping small businesses become big businesses since the 1990s. They want to help you if they can. So spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a good fit for them and they're a good fit for you. Their website is firstlibertyga.com. That's firstlibertyga.com. Again, you need a loan, $750,000 or higher. You're a small business and you see an opportunity to grow. Share it with the Frost family and see if they can help you. Firstlibertyga.com. That's firstlibertyga.com. First Liberty Building and Loan can help businesses nationwide become bigger businesses.
The regular season is heating up. New stars are emerging, and that means more opportunities to win up to 25 times your cash on prize picks. The most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection on a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's that easy. Let it fly to turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Watch your favorite players and get paid doing it this basketball season. See your entries make progress during the game or make new entries for the second half and the fourth quarter. Three pointers, assists, rebounds, and everything in between are yours for the taking. Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less, it's that easy.